Hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brett Pontecorvo. We are here every single Thursday, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, checking out how people are using Gig Performer. If you are here and you are watching, let us know what instrument you play. Um, today we are actually meeting with a fantastic saxophone player and keyboard player, uh, Joachim. Joachim. I was practicing this one. I can see him laughing in the back. But um, he's doing really cool things, running multiple instances of Gig Performer, um, playing in, uh, I guess, a, a cover band, but not a tribute band, uh, doing all sorts of different types of concerts. Um, and he's put together a really efficient, really interesting uh, set up using Gig Performer that I think we're going to get a lot of value from. Um, and he's kind of one of those people who just finds a way to get the best. Like when you listen to his set, you're going to hear it today. You know, he kind of just said, okay, I need it to be at this level. And then he built it. Um, so he's using some different integrations. He's getting amazing sounds uh, and it's really working well for him. So uh, let us know what instrument you're playing. Let us know if you're here. And if you love these streams and you get value out of them, click that like and subscribe button. It really helps us get the word out about Gig Performer. So without further ado, we are going to welcome on our special guest, Joachim. Welcome. How are you today, man? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Doing well. Thank you so much uh, for being here. It's yeah, going to be a great episode. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, for I sure. So. We actually have Harry coming in, Harry Trendle, previous uh, backstage uh, guest, who just is releasing some uh, some concert on the internet. Um, it's on his website, and it's really cool. Uh, Harry, you can leave a link for that in the description if you are in the comments. I feel like people might really dig that. Um, so, Joachim, what? Who are you? What do you do? Like, tell us your story. So, hi, I'm Joachim. You said it pretty, pretty good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I got to work on the German. Yeah, I'm a German musician. Um, I'm a teacher as well. I teach saxophone and I play in a band called Ambience where I'm using Gig Performer for keyboards as well as my saxophones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's awesome, man. How, how long have you been working with this particular band? Um, I've been a recurring guest musician since 2014. Okay. And then keyboard since 2017. Okay. So I started only sax, and then later on, I took over keyboard as well. Wow. What was that transition like? That's a big jump, right? You started playing a lot more music when you started playing keyboard. Yeah, and I had to practice a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, so you, you are a sax player first. Yeah. First, I'm a sax player. So um, I, I've always played piano, but saxophone was my... I've made a living place playing saxophone, mm -hmm. but I had to adapt. I had to learn keys, and yeah, so yeah, and it I, is what it is. <laughs> do, you, do you like it? Do you, yeah, do you enjoy it's it? it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Especially... Um, Using Gig Performer, doing the sounds I do, so it's not piano, it's synthesizers. I can pretty much create any sound I want. It's yeah. great. Yeah, that's a ton of fun. And were you, so you, you jumped in on keyboard. Like, where did that conversation go? Was it like, hey, you're a sax player. Do you think you can play keyboard? Like, did they know that you were no, also they, a keyboard? They knew, they knew I could play keys. But I'm, I'm as I said, I'm not a keyboard player first. Right. Right. So did they reach out to you just because like you knew the set, you knew the songs, you knew the band, you were reliable? Like, how did yeah, that end up happening? It's, uh, it's a band in my, my hometown. So we're all friends. We're all playing yeah. together for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I guess it, it was a logical, logical thing to do. Yeah. It's kind of cool when that's the way it happens, because, yeah. you know, music is so relational. Like the people yeah. that you are doing music with, like, those are your people. You're spending some yeah. time with them, doing some, you know, a lot, a yeah, lot of work. Uh, so you better like each other. <laughs> that's, that's true. I guess history is filled with bands of people who don't like each other. But, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay. So when you started making the transition over to keys, was that on forte? Uh, I started out with hardware only. Okay. So, but it uh, just wasn't doing it. So I needed more sounds. And uh, then I took, to, uh, I looked at Forte. I started out with Forte first, okay. but it wasn't really that stable. 
Um, okay. So okay. I, I've always well, um, always was looking for other solutions until I found Gig Performer and yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you found Gig Performer. That was yeah. Yeah. And so that was it? So yeah. So with hardware, your primary frustration was just that you didn't have enough sounds, or was it switching songs, yeah. or kind of all of the above? All of the above. Yeah. The limitations in sound, so it it wasn't a, a Nord or something, th mm -hmm. uh, something. So pretty pretty few sounds, and mm -hmm. you would have to switch everything by hand. So yeah. So it didn't yeah. really work. It didn't really work for me. Yeah. So enter gig performer. Um, yeah. So your gig performer setup is, I mean, it's, it's pretty massive. I'm like, to, so give us the whole overview before you share your screen. What's right. controlling uh, what? Give us the whole. The yeah, whole I can. View. I can maybe start by showing you what's going on hardware. Well, yeah, let me that'd get be awesome. Camera. Yeah. So I have an 88 key controller, native instruments. Nice. And I have a native instruments machine a pad controller. Awesome. So those are my two and controllers. You're using the pads as drum triggers or are you using them as uh, like changing sounds? No, I use it as triggers. Not only okay. drums, but yeah, uh, maybe I'll show you later. Okay. So and I have a Android tablet running band helper. Awesome. With my set list going on. Which is awesome. sending program changes to Geek Performer. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, for those yeah. of you who don't know, um, you are using Windows. I'm using Windows. Yep. Okay. So Android tablet. <laughs> Which you sending... said to me is terrifying to you. It, it's it's <laughs> horrifying on my. I'm like, but you know what? There are a lot of Windows users who are able to use Gig Performer. Yeah. Um, I just once I switched to Mac, I was like, well, this is better. But yeah. <laughs> but um. <laughs> That's, I guess that's just my personal opinion. Um, so you've got your 88 key controller, and then right. now now you've got your saxophones. I can see over there. The saxophones. Yeah. Alto here and tenor, both mic'd up, wireless. Yep. So, which is going to my rack, which is sitting on the left. Yep. You can see that. And do you take this rack to every gig? To every gig with this band. Okay. So okay. It's my full setup. Um, everything ready to go, mic'd up, so it's plug and play. It yep. took a lot of preparation, but it's set up uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. I have a, a Moto MIDI interface, RME audio interface. These two are my mic receivers. Okay. For auto, tenor. Yep. And my in ear transmitter. Yep. And I have an old native instruments. Uh, Trauma controller, which is sending only MIDI, so no sound oh. module. Wow. Okay, so that's within reach. You use that? Yeah. Okay. I don't, actually. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I, I use it, but uh, not really that much. <laughs> David has the same module. I see him holding ah. it up backstage, which is very <laughs> yeah, it's, funny. It's hard to I get. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, better recharger, and that's it. Okay, cool. So... This is like one of those things where, you know, the hardware does to somewhat make a difference. Actually, Dave Bolden just wrote in Windows 11 user. So <laughs> there we go. Um, but you putting together a rack like that, having kind of the consistent hardware where you know things are like that, that makes your setup much less painful. Yeah. Because um, you just kind of know that it's going to work. W what would you yeah. say your total setup time is when you're playing with this band? Fifteen to twenty minutes. It's not not bad, because yeah. <laughs> it's a that's a lot of stuff lot. that you've got yeah. going on. Um, do yeah, you right. do you have? Um, we had somebody come on who like always travels with backup cables. Are you one of those people? Like. Not so much. I have some. I have some, but maybe yeah. I should bring more. <laughs> I don't know. I I always <laughs> wonder. Um, so, so I don't I don't bring a second power cable for the keyboard. So if that dies, gig is over. <laughs> well, or you use Rig Manager and you find somebody who has a keyboard, yeah. hopefully laying around. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> do you use any um, controls on your keyboard, or are you really just using the keys? Like, are you modulating parameters while you play or mostly pre-programmed? 
Uh, I do that, but I do it not that much. Okay. So uh, basically, it's all preset and ready to go. If I have to control a filter, I do that, but very little of that. So it's my my sounds are set in stone. They're the same every night. Yeah. But yeah. I, I have controls. Yeah. yeah. And I use them. And I so, have an expression pedal on the floor, which yeah. I also use. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit more about Band Helper? <clears throat> this is kind of a theme that keeps coming up. Were you the person who decided we're using Band Helper, or was that a facet of the band when you joined? Yeah, I, it's just me using Band Helper, so... Wow. Okay. Yeah. I use it for program changes, for set lists, and I also have it displaying some uh, sheets if I need it. Gotcha. And... I don't need sheets that much, but if I have to, I know they're there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's sending program change messages into Gig Performer, right? Which is then causing Gig Performer to send program changes to Gig Performer, your second right. instance. Yeah, right. Which instance exactly. receives program changes first? The keyboard instance. Okay. So I have Band Helper. I have a USB-C to MIDI cable. Mm -hmm. going into my Motu MIDI interface. Mm -hmm. And the keyboard instance of Gig Performer is receiving the program change first. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and that is then Gig Performer is sending program changes to instance number two, which is your SAX instance. And exactly. all of this is controlled, like, basically through Band Helper. So during the live set, mostly when you're switching songs, that's where you're going. So, yeah. In an ideal world, I don't touch my laptop yep. during a gig. Do you have to I see your laptop? I like to see it, yeah. Yeah. I don't, maybe I don't have to, but yeah. Yeah. I like, to, I like to. Normally, it's sitting to the left, so I take a look. No, I'm on the right song. Mm -hmm. Everything works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, um, let's, uh, let's take a look at your setup. Can you show us inside and, and what's going on? Yeah, should I sh uh, share my screen? Yeah, maybe? yeah, absolutely. Um, and maybe, well, I don't know. What What do you think is the best place to start for us to like understand the full flow of what you're doing? Do you want to start with the sax instance, the keyboard instance? Uh, maybe I show you how those two are talking to each other. Perfect, perfect. All right, I'm going to pull that so, up on the screen. Uh, Boom. All right. So... This is what I'm looking at when I'm playing live. This is um, the keyboard instance on mm -hmm. setlist mode. Okay. And I always have a all song setlist. So gotcha. <clears throat> um, that's always the gig file I pull up. All mm -hmm. songs, no, uh, no predictive loading, everything mm -hmm. loaded and ready to go. Mm -hmm. so, keyboard instance in setlist mode is receiving, yeah, now I'm changing the song on Band Helper. That's changing, changing the song. Awesome. So just a matter of finding the right song. One of your songs switching. had quite a few instance, uh, quite a few um, song parts. Are you, how are you moving through song parts? So this one has quite a few. It's just three different variations. Gotcha. But quite a few song parts. So I yeah. always step, th uh, step through. I have a pedal to my left here. It's a mm -hmm. sustain pedal. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. I like to use sustain pedals for that because they're nice and big and hard to miss. Yes. Yes. So, okay, cool. And also, also I have this Hold air on, turn let me device, make you bigger. Bluetooth. Yep. So that's awesome. a, a page turner, mm -hmm. which is um, because I'm playing sax and I like to walk around on a stage that's mm -hmm. uh, sitting next to the singer. So if I'm playing a solo, I can switch my song parts from here. Wow. You okay. You yep. Really cool. So are you mapping one of those in the global uh controls and one of them in system actions um so the page turner is controlling band helper gotcha and band helper is sending a cc to gig performer gotcha. and i 
think I have my sustain pedal my on the uh, here in the global mm -hmm. and gotcha. the page turner in the set list. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very so cool. It's, it's doing the same thing, but yes. Yep. Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. So, so how are you sending to you're gonna tell us. Go ahead. Keep to keep yeah. going. I'm using a uh, loop MIDI to send program changes from the keyboard instance to the saxophone instance. So let me get them next to each other. So I'm pulling up a song where I play sax. Yeah. Like something got me started. Okay. And I have the song part sending out program changes mm. through loop MIDI port. I really have it nice. set on channel five and I have the saxophone instance only listening on channel five. There. Only except programmation wow. on channel five. So there's awesome. And then I step through my uh, song parts and it goes to my something got me started solo variation. I go mm -hmm. back, it goes back to my verse uh, variation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these uh, keyboard parts are always the same. It's always the same rack space for this song. Mm -hmm. They're only switching the saxophone instance. Gotcha. So if I'm pulling up Sunny, I have nothing going on on the keyboard because I don't play keys on the song, mm -hmm. but I have my saxophone instance going to Program change 52, which is my sunny variation. Really cool. I play can, solo. I have my sunny solo variation. Um, can you play some saxophone? It, it, the reason I want yeah, you to sure. is because it sounds so <laughs> incredible. Like, I want you to show us how you're processing it. But for people who are watching, like, yeah, it sounds yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> like, I actually can't believe the sound you're getting from your saxophone. It's blowing my mind. Yeah. So you are getting a finished result saxophone sound in real time on the stage. And so it's mo it mostly, mostly finish, finished. I yeah. still so, uh, leave a, a bit of room for EQing, of course. And yeah. yeah. But it's pretty finished. It sounds so, so nice. And it, <clears throat> what I love about it is it's like you're just processing audio and yeah. it's coming out and it, it sounds amazing. So I have, co of course, I have some FX going on, but mm -hmm. it's mostly audio. Yeah. What are you doing? Like, can you give us a yeah. kind of behind yeah. the wiring to show how you're processing your sax? So the saxophone instance is on Rackspace uh, view, and okay. I mostly, I do most of it um, on the global, global Rackspace. So I have my two. Mics going in on channel nine and ten, and they mm -hmm. both go in an audio mixer. Yep. Which is doing no leveling, but only muting my mics. Yeah. So I have something got me started is a song for alto, and this is my tenor mic is muted right now. If I go to the heat is on, which is a tenor song, my alto is muted and my tenor is live. <laughs> so good i love it so uh, this is your selector this is how you choose which instrument you're playing exactly yeah yep so i have a gate they're both going into mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not doing much i have some and what, what's the goal of the gate are you trying to filter out finger noise are you trying to filter out the rest of the no, band just, if i'm not playing i don't uh, ideally it wouldn't pick anything else up gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. i have some light compression going on but as, uh, also not too much because i want to have our sound guy mm -hmm. 
adding compression if it likes to. So there's no more than two or three dB going on here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And I have a fat filter EQ doing some light EQ. Again, no more than two or three dB. Yeah. And fat filter is receiving program changes as well. So right now I'm on the heat is on tenor. And if I switch back to something that we started, we're going to my alto EQ curve. Yep. And so this is what I love about this is like nothing that you've done here is a mistake. Like there's massive intentionality <laughs> going into yeah. making sure that each saxophone sounds the way it's supposed to sound every single yeah. time. Um, and if I'm playing and if you're playing shape of you, mm -hmm. they're both mute. Yep. So there's nothing, um, uh, nothing going through. Yep. No picking And that's up, just an empty uh, rack space, room. right? Yeah, so yeah. I have everything going to the global rack space and it's just empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so, can, yeah. can you talk a bit about your like boosting and not boosting process for, for yeah. sax? So how, how that's, my, I... that's my, my signal chain. They're mm -hmm. both going to, uh, they're going to the clo uh, local rack space mm -hmm. where I'm doing my leveling. So mm -hmm. this is, I have about six or seven rack spaces, but mm -hmm. this one is 80%. So n no FX going on except reverb and delay. Okay. I have my gain and balance, which is my volume for the song mm -hmm. controlled here. Mm -hmm. And I have another one giving me a 4 dB boost for soloing. Yes. So I have this widget here. And I don't toggle that live. So it's all preset. Typically, I don't look at my saxophone instance when, when playing live. So it's all gotcha. preset. If I know, if I program a new part and it's a solo part, I just toggle the widget by hand and I have my solo volume. Yep. So yep. I awesome. have reverb sand and a delay sand mm -hmm. going back to the global rack space. And I have my three favorite um, reverbs here in chain. Mm -hmm. And I can, if I'm programming a new, new variation, I can pick the reverb I like. Mm -hmm. I set the decay time. And those are, as you can see, controlling the widgets in the global rec space. Yep. Yep. Um, is this like evolving or for the most part, is this what you're working with? Like, do you That's ever find yourself like, being like, I wish I had this thing and adding it in for a particular song or you try not to do that? I don't go crazy on, on effects for my saxophone because uh, if I want uh, my saxophone to sound like a synthesizer, mm -hmm. I'd rather play synthesizer. So. Right. <laughs> but, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Having three different, different reverb plugins <laughs> is enough, I think. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> so are there any songs where you feel like you are um, like doing processing that makes your saxophone sound not saxophone-ish and you made that intentional choice on purpose? I have some effects going on. <clears throat> Again, I'm not going crazy. No. Right. Where are we? So I have. You know, shut up and dance. Yep. There's this synth solo that I play on sax, and I have an octave going an octave up. So it sounds like. Yep. It sounds so right. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's perfect. Yeah, and I, I'm playing sax on Seven Nation Army as well. I have an octave down, as well as some very light uh, distortion. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
So mm. again, not not crazy on effects, but yeah, but definitely uh, affected. Yeah, and yeah. I have I played a blinding lights melody. I have a chorus going in into LFO tool, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is that's not the right tempo. I'm keeping you uh, out out of your typical band helper. <laughs> <laughs> So it's basically mm -hmm. acting like an auto wah you act, I would say. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and just some what, filter automation. What made you want to go for this particular song, saxophone? You liked the way it felt, or you weren't playing keys already, or how did that come to be? So um, we're playing the song a little bit more like an '80s rock song, I would say. Gotcha. So it just f fitted play it on yep. saxophone makes sense and actually that's, whenever that's I, kind I can of... pick up the saxophone i like to do that yeah that's kind of interesting too which i don't know that we explicitly said this but when we were chatting we did mention it that like because of the nature of the type of work you do you're not necessarily mm -hmm. always trying to carbon copy yeah exactly so it gives you some freedom yeah. to do things and like... a, a song like planning lights is so production heavy you mm -hmm. almost can't get it exact yep. so it's better to to make it your own yep everybody listening here is going i'm gonna make an exact copy of this song and gig performer <laughs> uh, speaking of which if you're watching right now and you have any questions you want joachim joachim to answer the accent on the a i'm working on it um let us know in the comments because um he's got some really interesting solutions i'm sure he's actually going to show us more um, but if you're working on a setup and you got some questions for him or even questions about his setup, let us know. Um, okay, have we missed anything else in your sax? So for thing? delay, yeah, for delay, yeah. I'm having one delay plugin, uh, okay. Native Instruments Replica XXT, which mm -hmm. is also receiving program change. So Okay. And where is it receiving program yeah. changes from? From a widget. Okay. So, We'll let it do its That's thing it. for a moment. <laughs> um, so the replica is receiving program changes from a widget, and the program changes are just to change the type of delay. Is that what's going on? Yeah, the type okay. of delay, and I have, so we're good. Um, the type of delay, let me see. I can switch it here using that and it's stepping through the presets and i can oh i have a script telling me what uh what preset i'm on awesome awesome and you name the presets i assume Is yeah that... i named the preset okay. awesome and really, another really cool. thing i'm doing i'm having an instance of machine as a um just a sampler okay which is giving me let me see. I'm going back to something got me started. Okay. I have to route it so you can hear it. Okay. Solo. You heard that? I did hear that, yeah. <laughs> Out. Solo. Solo. Out. So I have the keyboard instance triggering a note on solo the part okay this is g1 on my loop midi part which i named vocal cues so when i'm walking around on stage and i press my air turn mm -hmm. i don't have to look at my screen to know i'm on the right song part gotcha so if i'm hearing something like this if i step twice on it solo i know there's something wrong and i can Aha. go back solo so I don't have to look on my screen when I'm playing sax. I can switch the song parts, and I know I'm I'm on the right song part. Does everybody else hear this, or this is just no, going to your just ears? Me. Wow, just me. Just me. <laughs> ears. It's really cool. Okay, but this is only for when you're playing sax. Yeah, because when I'm playing keys, I can look at my screen and know I'm. <laughs> I'm there. 
That's a really very, very cool solution. I have never heard of anybody doing anything like this before. So you need, you need audio feedback when you're not by your computer to know you're in the right place. I don't need it, but I want it. <laughs> Great. And I, can, and I can have it. So That's right. That's <laughs> right. So you're sending that through Loop MIDI, and that's going into yeah. Machine. Right. OK, awesome. Which is... And you're using that just as a sampler. Yeah. Exactly. It's so cool. I love it. Wow, really fascinating. Okay, so cool. That's basically... And so when you hear double, you just step backwards. Is that true? Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Or I know I have to go look at my screen what's, and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. What else is happening here in, this, in the sax part? That's basically it. Oh, are you using say... a widget to control your beat, beats per minute? Yeah. I used uh, Ableton Link to control, to send uh, um, BPM from the keyboard instance to my saxophone instance, but there was some glitches. It wasn't okay. always changing. So now I'm, I'm using widget. Really and cool. And it's working. So fine. you're just setting the BPM in the variation. Right. Yeah. Really cool. Wow. I don't see always do it. I I all, only need it when I'm having some BPM um, controlled delay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you always setting tempos in your keyboard instance? Is it more more uh, valuable there? Or I guess okay. So your band doesn't play with clicks, right? Which gives which creates some challenges. It does. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to talk to us about that and what you're doing to kind of work around it? Um, so let's go to the keyboard instance. So yeah, maybe let's, let's start by showing you a typical, typical keyboard rack space. Awesome. So my, my philosophy is, um, having one rack space per song. Okay. So I have waiting on the world to change with, which is having three different sounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's piano with some kind of toy piano. Yeah. I have a B3 and I have a Wurlitzer for the interlude. Awesome. So what I like to do is I have a MIDI filter filtering out anything except CC64 and note on, note off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You pointed out to me that I could use just a filtering in the MIDI end block. Yeah. But that's just the way I like to do it. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. So it no works. reason to change it. <laughs> so they're active all the time and I'm just bypassing node on using widgets here. Awesome. And again, I'm solo stepping through song parts. Yeah. Where are we? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's so nice. I mean, I guess I'm preaching to the choir here, but having everything loaded so that your switching is instant is a really good, really satisfying feeling. Yeah. Um, and the way just... I have it programmed, normally you would have two keyboards all right. in here. Easier. Yep. I um, like to, I'm bringing enough stuff already, so I like to have one controller yep. and just do the switching. Yep. Is it, is it just like programmed into your body at this point? Like, are you just not even thinking about when you need to change song parts because you've done yeah. it so many times? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Absolutely. And so, so this would be a typical setup. Like, you're basically be... always going MIDI in, MIDI filter, VST. Right. They're always going to the global rack space. Okay. Where just uh, I have my volume pedal giving me a 4 dB boost, and okay. I have some light EQing going on. So not really that much in the global okay. rack space. And are you doing the same like with uh, your sax part where the EQ is changing depending on the situation, or it's kind of a general no, EQ? 
I, if I do that, I do it in a local rec space because I have one rec space per song. Mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. boost some highs and have a have a low cut. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So maybe uh, let me get to one of the more complex uh, rec spaces. I'm hearing some oh. click. Oh yeah, you're hearing that. Yeah. Uh, because I'm starting the song. Gotcha. I have a widget giving me a click. And a chest, if the trauma takes over, I go to the next variation and the click is off. Gotcha. So does the drummer hear the click? No. Okay. But I'm assuming you start the song. Or do you do I start, the like? Yeah. Gotcha. I only do that where I start the song. Those are maybe four or five songs where I do it. Awesome. Awesome. So I start the song like this on, on the pad controller. Go. <laughs> so good. So again, um, it's no it's no track, no backing track. I'm playing every note because we are not running any tracks. Is it sampled from the original? Yeah, it is. Really, really cool. Really cool. Um, and do you just like the feel of the um, the pads for that type of a thing? Yeah, I, I like it. It's for for this percussive style. I also use it on. We've got a a, few. a question coming in from Glenn who wants to know. He says you're an amazing and very focused musician. I want to hear your band. Are there any YouTube videos that you can watch? Yeah, um, I think there might be. A link in the YouTube uh, YouTube description for okay. my band Ambience. Yeah, yeah. So check out that link in the description if you want to hear more of what Ambience is doing. Um, so uh, cool. Again, Shape of You. You're hearing a click because I start the song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like to do those kind of things um, on the pad controller or. Locked out of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How did you go about getting those samples? Did you make those? No, I found it uh, in some internet okay. community. I can't remember. Those okay. are not mine, and I don't think they're from the original song. Okay. Sweet. I, yeah, I me mean, get... sorry. Uh, you keep... Continue. I was just going to say they really work. Yeah. So there are some weird things going on on um, Uptown Funk. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, let me just play uh, in the chorus. Maybe just let me play yeah. the part and I talk about it. Um, so, what I'm doing, in the intro, I play my clap on the machine, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I have to use both hands in the chorus, doing the synth and the press. Yep. So, I have a scriptlet converting my sustain pedal to a MIDI note. I still don't know who wrote that. It might be David, but I'm not sure. Okay. So I have a MIDI in. I have a MIDI filter filtering out anything except CC64. Mm -hmm. And I have it converted to a node going into contact where my clap is sitting. And I have it. Wait. And I just hit two and four in the chorus. So, but my sustain pedal is still working as a sustain pedal. Yeah, so, and because of the way that the chords change, yeah, it the chord does cha double G. Change, yeah, there's claps on two and four, and the uh, chord changes on one. So, yep. yeah, it works. Very, very interesting.
So this was a and script I, that was from the community. Somebody wrote yeah, it for you. I think it was for um, switching for key switches on a drawbar organ, mm. Um, mm. where somebody wanted to use a fader for key switches. Gotcha. And I thought, well, I could use it to trigger sounds. So that's what I do on a couple of songs. Yes, I love it. Yeah. And another thing I do is on the press section, I just mm -hmm. couldn't play this part. <laughs> Maybe I'm not fast enough. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so let me show you what, I, can you see that? Yeah. Let me yep. show you what I play. So those are Fs. I see. And I have I have a script transposing just these two notes. Aha. Uh -huh. Because very, I, very creative. Yeah. And so that allows you to get more speed because you're using two different keys. Yeah, so <laughs> as I told you, I'm I'm not not that uh, I'm a sax player first. Maybe yeah. I'm just my technique is not good enough. I couldn't work it out. So it is now. I'm just doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, it is super fast. That's, it's, uh, I'm like, would I be able to play that? I guess I would use three fingers and play it yeah. alternating between thumb and... Anyway, this is very cool. So you found a yeah, solution but if you, if you, yeah, you. If you have If you have not the best technique, yeah. you, you can find workarounds especially when you have something that's flexible and an open mind. Yeah. It was really cool. So what are your two different MIDI in blocks there? Are you using that, the one with the script on it, just to catch those two extra notes? That's the only reason it's there? I think there's another instrument going on down here. I have these. Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go. Gotcha. And that's, that's just a contact instance with two instruments. Perfect. I normally have one instance per, per, uh, per instrument, but mm -hmm. that's the way I did it back then. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Very, very creative. It's, it's very cool the way you come up with that. That's yeah. very cool. So what awesome. you were talking about, the moves like checker, I used the same scriptlet. Converting mm -hmm. my where is it? Converting my sustain pedal to a mini note, mm -hmm. and I I'm playing this. Thing. Mm -hmm. Just omnisphere sound, and I wanted this sidechain compression. Mm -hmm. And since we're not running any backing tracks or MIDI tracks, you I didn't. I had no way of getting it synchronized with the band. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I'm, uh, you want it, you want it to be quiet on the one and you want it to be loud on the offbeat. So, mm -hmm. but there's no way of getting it synchronized when you don't run a click track. Yep. So what I do is I use LFO tool again, mm -hmm. which is typical for doing that stuff, but I have no trigger uh, re-trigger on, and I re I trigger the sequence with my sustain pedal. So what I do is I play the four on the floor like a drummer on my sustain pedal, and it gives me the sidechain compression. It's so fantastic. So LFO tool is giving you that modulation. Is is LFO tool also doing the filtering or is it controlling something else? Are you like mapping it out 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 to another effect? It's uh, volume automation in this case. Awesome. Awesome. So no filtering, just volume. Just volume. Really, really so cool. So I drew in the, the curve I wanted and I have it set longer than I needed. Mm -hmm. So I always re-trigger the sequence. Yep. Yep. And so it starts over every time you hit your sustain yeah. pedal, which is why it works. Yeah. Gotcha. Really, so really it's cool. no LFO in this case. It's an envelope, which I 
here we go over and over again right it's a it's so, a and manual when I, when I, yeah <laughs> and i'm when, when i'm playing the exact four on the floor and i'm uh -huh. not off it should give me the right uh sidechain compression have you had it not like have you has your band ever taken a wildly different tempo and the envelope is not good anymore or that's not happening? no 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 that it, yeah. it pretty much works yeah. so i had when i first used it i had to go in and re draw the curve a bit mm -hmm. but it typically it works yeah yeah you've got it dialed in now is what you're saying I've like got, at first yeah, it right. took some adjustment but now it's it's dialed in yeah right fantastic really really interesting okay cool what else do we have going on and by the way if you have any other questions for joachim pop them in the chat um glenn is very impressed so thank you glenn for for writing in if you got any questions about um what he's doing let us know i'm sure he'd be happy to answer it um what, what else do we have going on here have we missed anything i know we've talked through a, a good amount of your set so far yeah um so that's the the most crazy parts i would say i have some yeah things going on some larger things for can't stop the feeling for instance so there's a lot going mm. on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i have mm -hmm. again lfo tool doing my tremolo for yep. the And I again have it on no tree trigger. So okay. the sequence starts when I'm hitting a chord. Again, to ensure that I'm in sync with the band. Right. If the sequence right. is starting here, we're having the same problem again. I'm quiet on the one and I'm yeah no, so yeah. is this being triggered by both your your notes and your pedal or just by the pedal this is controlled only by the notes i have gotcha. again same technique yeah i have these snaps and again the sustain pedal working as sustain It's so good. So <laughs> sustain pedal is giving you those snaps so you can play with two hands and still have those sounds in time. Yeah, right. It's really fascinating. I love it. What do you have going on with Omnisphere? Um, that might be just a contact instrument. Gotcha. Yeah. I used Omnisphere. I have some a choir going on here. Gotcha. Which is um, a C major triad, mm -hmm. but I'm only playing a C. Gotcha. So I have MIDI in, just one note. Mm -hmm. And because Omnisphere is quite CPU heavy and I have a lot going on, I just sampled the sound imported it to contact and now it's a sample it's cpu friendly and mm -hmm. just gives me this this, uh, this major triad yep same well, thing yeah sorry what did you use to sample it did you just uh, like manually sample it or did you use like a sample robot type of thing i might have used machine for it okay I'm not sure gotcha same thing contact instrument just on the D. Again, gotcha. just sample it, set to the right tempo. Mm -hmm. And I have a cross sample going on here. Again, it's just um, native instruments, session horns. Okay. Just sampled. Awesome. So the way I play, and I have synth press up here. So the mm. way I play the chorus, I hit C for my choir, B for the arpeggiator. Mm -hmm. I have my press sample here, mm -hmm. and I have my synth press up here. 
I have my piano down here and I have my snaps right here. It's it's an insanely full sound. Yeah, so it's piano, claps, choir, press, synth press, and arpeggiator. Yeah. So six different sounds, but not that hard to play. Right. Right. If, if organized you, right. If organized right. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, one of the like nice things about having MIDI in blocks is that it can be so granular in what you isolate. And, and it also kind of means that all of your notes yeah. could be completely arbitrary. Yeah, Any note right. could do anything. Yeah. Um, which is this brightness sweep going on in the free chorus. Cool. Again, I think that might be Omnisphere just sampled and put into contact. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, contact seems to be one of the tools that people make use of to make their sets lighter weight. Like yeah. if you're having an issue with CPU resampling and putting it in contact seems to be the common solution people are yeah. using to get make it more resource friendly. Yeah, and it's it's so easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, well, I love this, man. We're, I, if anybody else has any questions, let us know. Feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, very, very cool. So how long would you say it took you to get this up and running and built? I mean, this is an insane amount of songs. What, what, what would you say the time was on creating this? A couple of hundred of hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it an all at once job? Was it no, like... no, no. It's okay. ever evolving. Okay. So I started out uh, still um, refining, but... Yeah. I was add it... a takeaway when you started doing it was it like the band asking you to start with you know these 50 songs or was it like here's your full set list see you next week like no <laughs> <having> that... <laughs> i was working my way up and yeah. i'm still to this day when i hear a song on the radio well there's this part of the song i actually don't play let me see if i can integrate it into my mm -hmm. setup yeah. So you're like you you do let your songs evolve to see if you can get yeah. more elements yeah. in. Absolutely. Sometimes I think that's the most effective way where you kind of continue to revisit a particular thing and add and refine, let yeah. it kind of grow naturally over get, time. Uh, again, there's yeah. not much going on on this side because um, my hands are full. I can't control any filters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's. The I love your label. The, the oh. labeling is very clear yeah. and easy to read. So, but yeah, I always like to have the name displayed big mm -hmm. and fat. So mm -hmm. I can look to the side, know I'm on the right song. And mm -hmm. like I said, I don't control that much. So mm -hmm. there are songs that look like this. No controls at all. But nice. The wiring for you looks like this. Yeah. If it's all preset and I don't... I don't touch my levels if they're set, so I just play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite yeah. tune to play with your band? Like, is there like a number one thing that you have the most fun doing? I like to play things like Can't Stop the Feeling, not mm -hmm. because I like the song that much, because it, it's, it makes fun to play, doing all these parts, yeah. playing six different instruments. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and of course, uh, some saxophone uh, mm -hmm. songs where I can play mm -hmm. solo. I like that. Yeah. Is your background in jazz? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, see, it's so interesting. I love that. Um, David and I often argue about which notes are included in a dominant seven chord. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, I love it. I do think that, like, um, well... I'll save my opinions about jazz music and you're playing cover <laughs> tunes, but 
I do think it's really helpful when you yeah. study jazz and you then go to cover tunes like this. Yeah. Just thought, thoughts behind that. I don't, I don't consider myself a jazz musician. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But um, I have studied some jazz. Sure, sure. I love it. Yeah, it's fun to play six different instruments. Actually, Glenn does have a question for you. He wants to know, does Gig Performer automatically start your second instance or do you manually start it? I manually started it. I haven't figured out yet how to do it. But I know there's a way. Okay. But oftentimes uh, when I'm rehearsing or editing some sounds, I like to only open the instance that I'm working on. So. Right. Right. Yep. And what's your total load time? Like you put your laptop on there, you open the file, and four minutes, three so, minutes? Yeah, the keyboard instance is pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. It's three and a half to four minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the, the saxophone instance is 10, 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Have we missed anything? Have we missed anything? Uh, that's basically it. Yeah. So if anybody else has any questions, feel free to write them in. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to ask uh, Joachim, the question I ask everybody, which is, um, if you were giving new gig performer user one suggestion uh, for getting started, um, what would you tell them? When I started out using Gig Performer, um, it opened up so much possibilities, and I wanted to have all these possibilities. So I had um, rack spaces for Fender Road sound, where I would have full control over every aspect. I had reverb. I, I had this dedicated MIDI mixer mm -hmm. with motorized faders where I mm -hmm. would control reverb, delay, chorus, phaser. But reality was I wasn't touching any of it when playing live. Mm. So there might be some, yeah, something like this. That's an... Mm -hmm. I don't use it anymore. It's just there from old times. So control mm -hmm. over tremolo, chorus, phaser, drive, low pass, reverb, delay. Mm -hmm. But the reality was I wasn't using any of it. So yeah. my advice would be to keep it simple and mm -hmm. make only use what what's makes sense to, to change life. Mm -hmm. I don't use a lot of a lot of widgets. There's mostly volume going on, which also I tend to not touch because my levels are set. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think that's a great suggestion because if you are playing piano, actually, I guess even more so if you're playing saxophone, yeah. your ability to control knobs is very low. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, there's that's... a lot going as a yeah. Keep it simple is <laughs> if you have rec space like this. But mm -hmm. on the front panel, I like to keep it simple. I don't touch anything mm -hmm. when playing live. Yep, yep. I finding more and more often this is what people say. Yeah, um, because when you're playing cover songs. Or honestly, even when you're playing original tunes, you're you're playing the tune. So unless you're playing a song that is different every time, which there are certainly yeah. songs that are different every time, then most of what you're going to play is the same every time. Yeah. And then again, as I said, I don't look at my saxophone instance when, play, when playing live. Mm -hmm. When I switch to a song, there's the click again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it's live. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's an yeah. insane amount of preparation, but when it comes to playing live, I pick a song and I play. That's right. That's right. And that's that's the like security behind gig performer in general. It's like when you're working, it is preparation. There's a lot yeah. of intentionality and a lot of work. But when you're playing, you don't have to think about gig performer. Right. You're just making music, which is really awesome. I met with somebody the other day who was like, I finally understand what they meant when they said own the stage. Because I had a moment yeah. where I was playing and I was like, I'm in complete control of my setup and I don't have to think about it. 
And I was like, yeah, there good. it is. You've got it. That's exactly what they meant. <laughs> and I'm hearing you kind of, uh, you know, share the same feeling. So, um, Joachim, are there places, if people are living in Germany somewhat near to you, that they could hear you play? Or are you mostly private events? Do you have any shows coming up? We have shows coming up. Um, so if you're in southern Germany, we're playing in Nagold on the 19th of November. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Might be um, a bit a bit far for you, but... Yeah. Maybe... <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a trip for me for sure yeah. but if i'm in southern germany at any point i yeah. will let you know <laughs> um i love it i love it well thank you so much um for sharing all of your stuff your knowledge your yeah. wisdom um just Thanks want to reiterate me. yeah it was such an honor man really you're doing such cool amazing things with this program and you're making great music um if you're watching don't forget that uh we've got a link to uh his music in the uh, description words are not coming very easily right now, which is a special <laughs> thing that's happening. Um, so do check out what Joachim is doing. Um, we will see you next week. Same time, 1130 AM Eastern standard time. Thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate uh, you being on Joachim. Um, all right.